What's up, everyone? I hope your day has been joyous. I'm bringing you another video from Oasis Church that showcases a prophetic dream from Tim Sheets. Let's dive right in. Obviously, this has caused me to pray and decree healing scriptures every day, many times a day, and there are very, there's a lot of them. Also, the last three months, I've thought about, I've thought a lot about my heritage and my calling as an apostle and how do they come together to release healings and miracles. I have received so many prophetic words over the years. I mean, the, it's, it's common. Some prophet's going to prophesy over me if I'm somewhere concerning healings and miracles. It happens all the time. Or sometimes it's about me and Dutch and healing and miracle ministry. It is, I don't know, dozens of times. And in fact, I, a part of this attack, I believe, is designed to stifle the spiritual DNA that is within me where divine healing is concerned. Um, it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. It has rather caused me to press in and seize hold of destiny. Destiny is very powerful. And it has caused me to ha have the time, but also uh, feel the, the passion of destiny. And I've repeatedly declared every day, or at least most days, God will turn this for good. God will turn this for good. Romans 8, 28, he's going to turn this for good. He didn't cause this. His covenant promise will help me overcome, but this is going to turn for good. I have also prayed almost every day and several times a day since being told this, for the healing power of Jesus that he paid for on the cross and paid for with the stripes upon his back to be poured out upon me and soak me and flow through me in such abundance. Not, not just for me to be healed. I know I am. I, again, I have no worries. But for tens of thousands to be healed in this era. Tens of thousands to be healed. It is a New Testament precedent. It is a precedent in the book of Acts. It's a precedent in the early apostles and Holy Spirit's plan is to release that again at levels the world has never seen. And I'm contending for that. I'm praying for Christ's covenant promise to heal to be released at far greater levels than was seen in the voice of healing movement of the 1950s and 60s. That has been a specific decree. Increase it greater than the 50s and 60s and the voice of healing movement or any other movement. That should happen because the size of the remnant now is much greater the apostles and the, the apostolic and prophetic movement is now functioning. We now have hundreds of functioning uh, ecclesias. And also the glory of the Lord is rising in far greater measure than we've ever seen before. And I do want to be, do, a, do my part whether it's big or small, I don't care what, I, but I want to do my part to see this, this happen. I, I fully know that it is led by the Holy Spirit. I, it's not about me, but I can raise my voice. I can contend and I can believe. And I know it is part of his plan for this era. And we are going to see it happen. It is a part of his plan for the king's ecclesias to loose Christ's healing power 
at levels never seen before. This supernatural transitional reformational era now beginning, Holy Spirit said, that hell's trying to stop. It is going to be released. And this era is going to be a supernatural era. And part of it is healing and miracles. Part of my heritage as a teenager goes back to what's called the voice of healing movement. Uh, Gordon Lindsay, who founded the Bible school, Christ for the Nations, where Carol and I went to school, Dutch and Cece went to school there, many of you would know, went to school there, was one of the leaders in that movement. And he also had a magazine that he put out every month called The Voice of Healing Magazine. And in it, he would give the testimonies that were occurring um, around our nation and world as great healing evangelists were ministering everywhere for those 20 years or so. Uh, and he would, he would give a report on a particular healing evangelist and report on great miracles that were happening everywhere. A.A. A. Allen, uh, Jack Cole, William Branham, Oral Roberts, R.W. Schambach, Catherine Kuhlman, David Nunn, T.L. Osborne, and thousands of people would come to these meetings and they would rent great auditoriums or often they had huge gospel tents that would hold thousands of people. I believe Jack Coles was the largest, 22,000 people. And people would come from everywhere and they would bring the sick and uh, people would be healed in the atmosphere of those meetings. Uh, uh, there was a corporate atmosphere that mighty things are going to happen in this meeting. Healing power is going to, to, to take place. And uh, blind eyes were open. Deaf ears were open. Uh, incurable diseases were healed. Even the local newspapers would report on this all across this nation some of it on the front page. Uh, my dad was one of those healing evangelists, though not as famous as the others. And he would have these people in to our church to speak sometimes. And when Dutch and I were teenagers, it was common to see these healing evangelists preach at our church, but then they come over to the house afterwards and just talk and get refreshments. I'm talking about Oral Roberts. I'm talking about um, David Nunn. These, and, and as a kid, I didn't, they're just guys to me. You know, I didn't know how famous they were till much later. Um, but also, our, my dad at our church would have prayer for the sick every Sunday night and Wednesday night, they were called healing and deliverance rallies. And we did it every week. I'm because uh, of who dad was and because of us being his boys, we worked those deliverance rallies. And uh, we would work the altars. If someone fell into the power of God, we help them get up. And uh, also he had a, a, a tent wasn't as big as some of them, but it would hold three or 400. And uh, he would find a, a farm or something somewhere, Xenia, Springfield, somewhere around. And uh, we would go and put up the tent and then me and Dutch would have to stay in the tent to keep vandals from messing with it. But I saw miracles happen with my own eyes that are just hard to explain. Yes, incurable diseases were healed. I saw blind eyes open. I saw uh, deaf ears open. Uh, a week or so ago, Dutch and I were talking on the phone and he was like, it, it, we recalled a time when a woman with stomach cancer began to cough it up. And I mean, literally, it was the ugliest, grossest thing and we had to clean it up. But my dad had a radio broadcast 
And this is documented. She was healed. It was gone. And we put it out over the radio broadcast. And there was just, I, mean, I could tell one story after the other. I mean, I have, I have been close by when bones begin to pop. I heard them. And bones pop and somebody unwind out of a wheelchair. I talk, uh, one stands to mind, it must have been 15 or 20 pops. A guy twisted up in a wheelchair and he unwound and jumped. I saw that. And I, I, I mean, I, I'm not, it's not hearsay. I saw it happen. And uh, one of our assignments was uh, to get to church early on Sunday or Wednesday night in case someone came in an ambulance. Back then they did that. And uh, they would, somebody would rent an ambulance that they'd be brought to the service. Well, we'd get there early to open the doors, get them in, get them lined up up front of the altar somewhere where they could see. And at some point they were gonna be prayed for. I'm not gonna tell you that every one of them were healed. That's not true, but some of them were. Some of them walked out without that bed. And uh, uh, it was one of those things that was a part of my heritage. And I used to love to go to the healing evangelist meetings in Dayton or if they were close by one of these guys. And in fact, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I, I even took Carol on dates to some of them. <laughs> it was because I was fascinated. I was captivated by this. Um, there are five apostles who I conference call with on Thursday nights. And they have coveted with me to pray for, of course, my healing. And they do. And they are, they are very thorough, declaring the word of the Lord. And uh, at the end of that, we take communion. But right off of the bat, there was a sense of destiny and purpose that they begin to pick on. Some of them are, well, all of them are very prophetic as well. And uh, the prophetic words begin to come forth on, on these calls. One prophesied, I'm hearing Holy Spirit say, replay the miracles you saw in your childhood and draw from them. Another said, I'm hearing Holy Spirit say that when you were in Bible school at Christ for the Nations, you had an encounter, a spiritual visitation that took place when you were there and Holy Spirit uh, began to draw out a part of your calling or talk to you through this about your calling. And I hear him saying he's now emphasizing it. Well, I knew exactly what he was talking about, instantly knew what he was talking about because I have thought about it uh, countless times. What took place that day was one of the healing evangelists was at Christ for the Nations. They have a guest speaker that comes in. Uh, and uh, because of who he was, here comes all these sick people that are wanting prayed for beyond the student body, you know. And uh, so here's all these people. And he begins to call out healings and miracles. And it starts happening uh, around the room. And as he's doing that, I am caught up in the spirit realm uh, and begin to see so clearly a vision form. And, and, and I begin to see this prophetic vision. And when that happens to me, it's, it's like it's really happening. I mean, it's real. And so I'm caught up and I see up on the platform, it, it wasn't him. It was me. And I very rarely talked about this, but it was me and I was calling out healings and miracles. And uh, this was in this vision before huge crowds of people all over the world. 
And I heard Holy Spirit say, one day you'll do this. Well, I, I have always felt the weight of that and didn't know how, I just didn't see how it was possible because I never felt I was ever to be a healing evangelist. I know I'm an apostle. Though I have had, I have done many healing meetings over the year. In fact, you might remember I went around the state and the counties and said, uh, did a healing meeting, say, bring in the sick, bring them from everywhere all around the county, we'll pray. And I, I've done that, but uh, not at the level that I saw in this vision. And again, I, so many prophetic words. You're going to release the healing and miracle heritage in your childhood. Well, I believe this is something Holy Spirit is now releasing or accelerating. It's now an assignment beyond a vision. It's part of the great harvest for this era, I believe. See, we must see healings and miracles amp up. It's one of the greatest evangelism tools that we have. Nothing like seeing a blind eye open to open people up to the gospel. I'm listening. See somebody that's crippled, healed, and suddenly there are people willing to listen. The coming generation that is on my heart has not seen healings and miracles like, like I saw. And they've got to see them. It's time. I believe it's time and I believe it now must become a part of my apostolic assignment. I believe also our Ecclesia hubs will now emphasize this year, I believe it starts, our Ecclesia hubs will now emphasize healings and miracles at new levels as Holy Spirit renews the days of the voice of healing in even greater ways than the 50s and 60s. In fact, I'm strong enough in my faith now to prophesy to you that will happen. It will happen. These apostolic healing or these apostolic ecclesia hubs are also going to be healing hubs, dramatic Healings, supernatural miracles have been prophesied to now accelerate. Stunning miracles are going to be seen. Stunning healings are going to be seen. Stunning miracles uh, are going to be seen. Holy Spirit's planned for them. And of course, the Ecclesia hubs and we ourselves, we must, we must pray it. That's our stewardship responsibility. We got to pray and decree for these days to accelerate forward and stand in faith for them. Because healing is the children's bread. It's God's will to heal. It's his will. And Jesus is our healer. He healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Uh, you can go back in New Testament times, see him do it. He gave his apostles power to go do it. The acts of the apostles, they did it. All things are possible. And Holy Spirit is saying, raise your faith now. Receive a fresh outpouring of divine healing. The five of us began to hear that on these calls very clearly. Um... Yes, it, it's, it's not just about me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm healed in Jesus' name. But it has focused us on something more. And we're hearing, we're, we're, we're pressing in to hear more. And uh, I don't know how Holy Spirit's going to do it all this time. I, I really don't. I know it'll be a bit different. But an outpouring that is activating the precedent seen in the New Testament and seen in the book of Acts. 
is now to be contended for and declared to be. Now I've known that something is stirring again here concerning this New Testament precedent. I've known it for the past two years now. On February 23, 2022, a couple of years ago, I was given a dream. I don't have many prophetic dreams. I mostly have prophetic visions, but I had this prophetic dream. I had just preached on notable miracles and prophesied that notable miracles were due to come, uh, to come forward in, in accelerated ways. And I'd preached it, preached notable miracles, prophesied them, and now I was, in, I was praying them. Because I don't just prophesy, I pray them, declare them, stand, contend for them. And I was, in, I was doing that. And during that time, Holy Spirit gave me a very unique dream. I shared it once here. And I have pondered it so many times. And I've had time to ponder it recently. In this dream, I was in a very large room. And I'm guessing a hundred or so people were in this room. All different ages, different races of uh, different nationalities. Very young, very old children, adults, and in between. The room was large enough that I could see the individuals in the room very clearly. And for some reason in this dream, I did. I, I kind of looked and paid attention to who was in that room. I could see them very clearly. And I saw a blind man with a white cane. And then I look and I I saw some who were obviously deaf because they were using sign language. I, some, I saw some who had very large sores from some kind of skin disease. It was clearly evident, I could see it. I saw people that were just very, very sick, like, like in the last stages of cancer, just very weak and very, very sick. I saw some that looked or appeared like they had something like a stroke because their limb or their hand or their arm or so didn't work right. You could tell it was paralyzed. I saw people sitting in wheelchairs. And it was like in this dream, it was like I had walked into a sick ward with people experiencing all kinds of sickness and diseases. And I could see the hollow look of, of sickness and fear on them and dread and hopelessness on their faces. It, it was evident. They just looked so sick. And I remember feeling so bad for them, so sad for them. I had that feeling in this dream. And, and in the dream, I begin to think, I hope I don't start crying in front of them. And I had this knowing, I, 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 it came to me, these people don't know what to do. They, they, do, they, they are hopeless, hopeless. They don't know what to do. Then in this dream, I somehow knew that I was supposed to leave this room and I opened the door and I went out into the hallway and across the hallway there was another door and I somehow knew that I'm supposed to go through this door. And so I walk out of this room across into another room. And when I went into that room, it was just like the other room. Uh, there may be a hundred people or so of all ages and, and races. But these people were totally different than the other room. They were happy. 
They were laughing. They were joyful. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them. They were in perfect health. They were filled with energy. They were filled with life. And of course, I, I noticed the contrast between these, these two rooms. And I stood there for a moment in this dream, in this second room, and a man walked up to me that I had never met, but who I recognized. I, when I was 10 years old, I had played his album uh, back then, there wasn't CDs, there wasn't <laughs> cassettes. I go back to albums, they're this big around. Uh, but my dad had got hold of that and some old reel to reel messages. And it was back then, some of the famous preachers would actually put a sermon on an album. And there was one there that when I was 10 years old, I played four or five times. And uh, it was of a man who is in heaven now. He's part of the cloud of witnesses. But he, began to, he would talk about the miracles that he saw and, and what happened. And it was just captivating. Well, that man was T.L. Osborne, one of the greatest healing evangelists ever. Notable miracles happened in his crusades by the thousands. Cripples were healed. Dozens of blind people would be healed in one service. Some of the overseas crowds would be 75,000, 100,000 or more people. And people would leave piles of crutches like a bonfire kind of. I've seen the pictures or wheelchairs would be left at, at the altar. Also, T.L. Osborne was the speaker at the full gospel businessmen's meeting the night I decided I would go to Bible school uh, and into full-time ministry. I had, I had heard of him through this album and, and had listened to him and I, I knew of him from others talk. And now he was going to be in our area. Uh, and Rachel would have been about one years old when this happened. He was going to be in Northern Kentucky at a full gospel business men, men's meeting. And I had to go. And we went. And that night, for whatever reason, he began to talk about the calling on his life. And he, he simply said, I didn't, I don't, say I had a visitation calling, those kind of things. He said, one day I just determined that I would do what I could. And that for some reason stuck with me. I thought I can do that. I can do what I can and I'm going to. Well, I hadn't thought about him in years uh, at the time of this dream. Anyway, in this dream, he walks up to me and he has someone with him. And he says to me, do you recognize this man? And again, in this dream, I said, no, sir, I, I, I don't think I do. And he brought another person over and he said, do you, do you recognize them? And I said, no, Dr. Osborne, I don't, I don't recognize them. And then he just kept bringing one person after the other to me and asked me if I recognize them. And I kept saying, no, sir, I, I, don't, I don't know who they are. And then he got this big smile on his face. And if you've ever seen his old videos, he had an awesome smile. His old, he had one of those, his whole face smiled, you know. He smiled real big and he said, look real close and see if you recognize them. So I looked real close and I said, sorry, I, I don't recognize them. And he said, you were just in the room across the hall 
with these very same people. This one is the one that had sores all over his body. This one is the one in the wheelchair over by the wall. This one is the stroke victim that you saw couldn't move their hand. They were paralyzed. This, this, this one, that's who this is. He brought a group of people over. He said, these are the cancer victims that you saw who were so weak. And he brought another man over and he said, this is the blind man who carried the white cane. And then there was a group of little children and they came running over to us in this dream. And he said, these are the children that were so sick. One after the other, he introduced me to people so healthy, so lively, so transformed that I did not recognize they were the same ones that I had seen across the hallway in desperate condition. And then Dr. Osborne asked me a question. Again, in this dream, he said, do you know what room you walked into? And I said, no, sir, I just wanted to get out of that room. And I, I just felt like I'm going to get out of there. And I saw this room. And I just felt like I, I felt like coming into this room. He smiled again, very big. And he said, well, this is the covenant room. And he pointed to the to the end of the room down on the hall, upon which was a part of a scripture that I recognized that was written on that wall. And it was 1 Peter 2, 24, the last line of it that read, by his stripes, we were healed. And that was the dream. I want to see the dream of Holy Spirit fulfilled. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't even need to know all of it. He'll tell me. He'll tell us all. But I know, I know that he's going to do this. I know it's a part of destiny. I know it's a part of this move, this end time move. We are moving now into a supernatural era of outpourings of the Holy Spirit that will release healing anointings, activate the gift of healings, and workings of miracles in described in first Corinthians 12 at a new level. Of course, yes, healing is always available. I know that. And we have, we have, we have heard great testimonies, but not nearly what we could, not nearly at the level that we need to. And we need to press into this at a new level. I, uh, I am burdened for those that don't know what to do. They feel hopeless. I'm not going to get too far into it, but they've been taught so bad. They don't even know healing's available. They, they don't know what I know. They don't know how to grow their faith. They don't, they've been told it's not even for now. The healing movement is a heritage that we've got to tap into, teaching it, praying it, and declaring our faith for it to accelerate in New Testament churches everywhere now. And we're going to do it. I'm going to pester a lot of people spiritually. Now, um, before I preach the eternal gospel here, 
I want to explain something that's going to begin this Wednesday during our midweek prayer, and then I'll pray it. Uh, we are blessed to have thousands of people tune in to pray. Uh, it's amazing to me. I mean, 15, 20,000 people will come in and pray. And I want to stir this, this healing anointing on, up on Wednesday nights for the next few months and maybe longer. Just let Holy Spirit lead how long. But at the end of our prayer time, which I have people, they, that we, I'm going to pray the, the current needs of our nation, our world. And uh, it's short. Uh, Rachel starts with a song, praise team song. Then I come in and talk briefly and we begin to pray the prayer points. But at the end of that, those that came on to pray that, fine, you can get offline. But those that will, I'm gonna ask that they stay online with me for three more minutes. And in those three minutes, I'm going to release the healing power of God as best I can. And uh, I will, I will give a healing scripture, and there are many. Here's what the Word of God says. And then, uh, and again, I'm going to do this, it'll be quick. But then I'm going to ask however many thousands of people on there, I'm going to ask them to come into agreement uh, with me concerning the release of this. Matthew 18 and 19 tells us that if any two agree on anything uh, and touching anything, it'll be done. Well, how many can a thousand do? And I'm gonna ask, pause with me and pray for the release of this covenant promise and this movement in the earth. And I have no doubt there will be thousands that will. And then I'm going to tell those that are sick for any reason. I don't care if it's a cure, incurable disease in the natural. It can be a hangnail. God's not headache. I don't care. Cancer. He's not limited. He, nothing's going to challenge him. And then I'm going to, we're going to begin to pray over the sick. Sick in other nations, sick in every state, sick everywhere. And ask, would the power of the living God surge and heal them? And I'm starting to see how in that vision, how this could be thousands and thousands of people and never understood it. They're there. And tell your friends next week, tune in again. Tell, tell some of you they're sick. Hey, turn, tune in Wednesday night because the ecclesia is going to pray for you and want to release the power of God. And uh, we'll do it again next week. It's like hitting a nail. Drive it in, drive it in, drive it in. Then I'm going to ask for, of course, what Gordon Lindsay did years ago, ask for testimonies. Send the testimony of what God has done for you. And we're going to brag on our God. Though sick for any reason, we are going to intentionally begin to release the healing power of God. So beyond that, we're just going to let the Holy Spirit lead. But uh, I am confident He's up to something. So that's an explanation. I'm going to overcome this, but, but beyond to overcome it, I intend to triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. So singers and musicians come because I want to pray this. And I'm going to ask that you challenge your own heart to begin to believe for this. And... Uh, I know other apostles are starting to pick this up. Lord, we ask, we dare ask that there come a synergy on healing movements 
in the 50s and 60s to synergize throughout this earth. And as an apostle in your kingdom, I prophesy it will and I declare it done in Jesus name. We would ask that what you did in your earthly ministry, going about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and diseases would occur in your ecclesia hubs. We declare the apostles and the prophets as in the book of Acts would now be mantled with an anointing, a breaker anointing to break disease off people and to see miracles and signs and wonders. I embrace the assignment. I thank you that you are my healer, but I thank you that you want to heal the masses again. You want to touch. Strengthen us for the assignment. Give wisdom and revelation and enlightenment to the prophets and to the apostles and to the ecclesia hubs. May hope Go forth to the captives. May hope begin to resound through the land and through the earth to those who don't know what to do. And we declare your greatness will be seen. Oh, it's going to be seen at a, a level that we have dreamed of. Your word does not return void. You will do exactly what you say. So those of you that may have a need today in this room or in any state you're in or any nation you're in, here's three minutes. All of you in this room, pray for the release of this. If you don't know what to pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray for healings and miracles to manifest. And if you're sick today, you draw on this. If you're sick wherever you're at, any nation, you draw on this. And if you're fine wherever you're at in your living room or wherever you are, then you pray for the release of this. Let's activate this prophetic word of the Lord. Raise your voice with mine in agreement. Lord, we stand before you today and we believe your word is absolutely true. The saints in this house and the saints around this nation and the saints around this world are calling on you to pour out your spirit to pour out your spirit in such a way that the anointing of the divine power of our King would be activated, healing the sick, set captives free today, deliver those that have cancer, eradicate it by the power of the living God. Let cripples come out of wheelchairs all over this planet. Blind eyes be opened. In the name of Jesus, himself bore your sickness and carried your diseases. By his stripes, you're healed. You're healed. Receive that. We contend for this in Jesus' name. We call out to you. Pour it out. Pour it out on the ecclesia hubs. Pour it out on your apostles. Pour it out on the prophets. Pour it out, Lord. Let those great healing mantles fall upon us. Thank you, Lord. Heal them. I pray for those that are bound by disease, sick and hopeless, and don't know what to do. Grab hold of the hem of the garment of the King. Virtue will flow. Power will flow flow into every cell of your body. We bind spirits of infirmity. We bind the work of demon powers. You will not stop this. In the name of Jesus, pour it out, Lord. Pour it out on local churches, 
national churches, movements. Pour it out, Holy Spirit. Pour it out in the nations of the world. Let your healing power manifest at levels we've never seen before. You are the same yesterday, today, forever. You're the same healer. You paid for our healing. You prayed by the stripes on your back. You carried it away. Carry disease away from people. Carry disease off of their lives. Set them free. Set them free. We declare miracles begin to manifest. Miracles manifest. Miracles in homes. Miracles in cars. Miracles in prayer meetings. Miracles as we worship you on Sunday morning or Wednesday night. In all our gatherings. Miracles. Miracles. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them. In the name of Jesus. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Burden the intercessors to grab hold of this, Lord. Burden the prayer warriors to grab hold of this mantle. To birth it, to pray it. To pray it in the morning and evenings. Pray it all night. Intercessors, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know how to pray. You know how to birth this. Pray it, pray it, pray it and pray it. Pray it and pray it. Accelerate this, Lord. Accelerate it to roll through the land. May this great tool of evangelism reach. Reach into the nation and reach into the world. Show your power to those that have never heard about your power. Show your power to the coming generation that have never seen what you can do. They haven't even heard the stories because it's been buried in the dispensationalism. But we say you're the same God. You're the God that heals now. Your covenant is true now. And you're going to prove it. You're going to prove who you are. And so we rejoice and we give you thanks even now that testimonies are going to come in. God move for me. Hallelujah. Yes, when you it's for the king and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for allowing me to share with you today and give you a little bit of uh, insight and we just decree the word of the Lord. And uh, you might have heard this before, but I'll, I'll just say it again. The best days in church history, in my life and your life, are not in our past, in our present and in our future. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.